Ladies and gentlemen, Page Meets Stage proudly welcomes to the Bowery Poetry Club, Ada Limon. I'm, I'm going to the first book for this one. The Echo Sounder begins with the definition. The echo sounder noun, a device for measuring depth of water by sending pressure waves down from the surface and recording the time until the echo returns from the bottom. American Heritage Dictionary. One, she enters the world a ready set go girl. She comes with a list of things she cannot see. She comes with a language restricted by its own inability to name things as she sees them. She believes that there are two worlds and she lives in the one that is separate from the other. The seed that comes up outside the garden, the one door with no handle, the shingle in the roof with the weather vane, the arrow flying out from the quiver. The child who can balance on her palms and is hated for it. She wears no shirt. Still, no one speaks to her. She speaks to everyone. She has a bicycle and a family, but it does not matter. She is difficult to catch. She knows all the names of all the fish. She is aware of them dying all the time. Upstream, the sockeye and the coho. Upstream, the chinook and the king. Upstream to the sand and rock nest of their deaths. She thinks the bodies decay too quickly. Two. When she is 11 years old, she thinks her body will be like that of a fish. She does not want to decay before she uses it. She is confused in the dark. She is never scared. She is convinced that she can talk to God, and so she asks him a question. She does not get an answer, so she makes one up. She believes the answer is, everything stops. The food is in the mouth, but the mouth is not there. The water flows, but there is no creek. She understands now that bodies can swing from trees and whole families can be locked up, that people die the way fish do, starving sometimes, gutted and tortured by children who think they are being scientific and responsible. She thinks God must know this, and therefore he is ugly. She decides God is no good, but he must exist. She must exist so he, she can hold him accountable. She decides this and then forgets. Three. At one point, she decides she is in love. The way she woke up one day and thought she had dreamt up the word Philadelphia. <laughs> that there was no other word in the world as beautiful as Philadelphia, <laughs> and how she planned to make it mean something, like the way everything can touch you at once, the mason on the billboard, the old theater's neon sign, the water towers next to the cross, the curve in the road where the school bus stopped, the wet smell of boots and dirt, the feeling you get when all those things get to you and you want to cry and pray, and because you can't do either, you tell everyone to leave you alone so you can go on feeling the world climbing around in your body like you were just as much a part of it as it was of you. Maybe she thought she could call that feeling Philadelphia. She fell in love the same way. Four. One week she thinks about offering, how it is difficult to offer something of yourself. She thinks it should be easy. How she has an echo chamber in her chest. What she sends out should reflect and return. She goes to the creek on one trip home and sits there for longer than she planned. She decides to estimate how long she will live, and then she says, this is when she will die. She says it again, this is when I will die. As if the repetition will endow the words with nonsense, the way a word becomes no longer a word, but a strange sound that animals make. She takes comfort in her animalness. She wants to go on being an animal, not something that represents something else, but the original object, the thing before it was named, the fish before she knew it was a fish, when it was just another lost thing, individual and shadowy, working its way towards its own end. <laughs> 